Hello Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Zyrene and today's video will be our guide to Viego, the Ruined King. Viego has been out on the PvE and we've been grinding away, testing things out so that you don't have to. In this video we'll be going over his abilities, how he works, and of course his builds. Although Viego does work well as a top lane bruiser, we believe he's currently best played as a carry in the jungle, so that's what this guide will be focusing on. Remember, since this is all based on info from the PvE, everything is still tentative, but he should be in a very similar state once his release on live comes around. In case you're not familiar with Viego's kit, let's start out by talking about what he does. His passive is Sovereign's Domination. Whenever a champion is killed by Viego or dies within 3 seconds of being damaged by him, a Mist Wraith spawns from their corpse, lasting 8 seconds. Viego can then use a basic attack on the Mist Wraith to possess it, healing himself for a percentage of the target's maximum health. This percentage is increased by Viego's bonus AD, AP, and bonus attack speed. He winds up for 1 second, becomes untargetable to all but turret attacks, and then blinks to the location of the Wraith. After he possesses the Wraith, his basic attacks, basic abilities, items, base stats, and appearances are all replaced by the champion the Wraith was spawned from. The possession can last up to 10 seconds and grants him a free cast of his ultimate Heartbreaker after a 1.5 second cooldown. Viego also gains 10% movement speed when moving towards enemy champions while he's using possession. Viego cannot use item actives, consumable items, nor the shop while possessed. Viego will preserve his current health percentage between transformations. Being able to possess dead champions means that to get the utmost potential out of Viego, you have to have pretty good mastery over every other champion in the game. Besides playing the champions you pick up well, even timing the attack that initiates the possession can play a big part in your teamfight success. Since you go untargetable, it can be used to dodge incoming crowd control and big bursts of damage if you use it properly. Okay, so before we even get to his actual abilities, this passive means that Viego has an incredibly high skill ceiling. In fact, he may be a contender for the hardest champion in the game to truly master. That brings us to our question of the day. Which champion do you think has the highest skill cap? Some champions are truly hard to play to their full potential, but once you're able to, you have crazy outplay potential in a variety of situations. Let us know your answer in the comments below. Now on to the rest of his kit. His Q is aptly named Blade of the Ruined King. The passive is Viego's basic attacks deal bonus physical damage equal to a percentage of the target's current health on hit. Like most other similar effects, it has a minimum threshold and is capped against monsters. The second part of Q's passive makes it so that Viego's damaging abilities apply a mark to enemies for 4 seconds. Viego's next basic attack against a marked target consumes the mark to attack twice, with the second strike doing damage based on both AD and AP and heals Viego for 150% of the post-mitigation damage dealt. The second strike is affected by critical strike modifiers, and when he is not possessing another champion, it applies on-hit effects at 100% effectiveness. Both of these passives remain in effect while Viego is possessing another champion. The active is Viego thrusts his blade in towards the cursor, dealing physical damage to all enemies hit in a line. This damage scales off of AD, but is also increased by a percentage based on Viego's critical strike chance. With three parts to it, Viego gets a lot out of just one basic ability slot. The active on this is relatively simple. It's pretty similar to Yone's and Yasuo's unempowered Qs, but without the on-hit effects in lifesteal. The first passive gives good dueling against tankier targets, and since it applies as an on-hit effect on every auto, it synergizes super well with building into an actual Blade of the Ruined King and Ginsu's Rage Blade. The second part of the passive makes it important to weave autoists in between spell casts, as opposed to just face rolling your keyboard. The healing portion provides a lot of sustain in the jungle, and provides a lot of bonus healing in teamfights. One thing to note is that this healing is increased against monsters, and isn't capped at all yet on minions, so you can easily use it to heal up even when super low off of a minion wave or a monster camp instead of recalling if an objective is spawned in the mid to late game. Viego's W is Spectral Maw. The active is Viego charges up, slowing himself by 15% for up to 3 seconds. Spectral Maw's missed missile range and stun duration increases over the first second of charging. You can recast W again at any point during the charge up, and failing to recast during the 3 second charge causes Spectral Maw to cancel and go on full cooldown. If this charge up is interrupted, Spectral Maw goes on a 3 second cooldown, this cooldown is not affected by CDR. When you recast the ability, Viego hurls a blast of mist in the target direction and dashes a fixed distance in the same direction. This dash cannot go through terrain. The mist does damage to the first enemy struck and stuns them based on the channel time. This bit of mobility and CC will help a lot with your early ganks, but make sure you understand that you cannot go over walls with this jump. Also, the charge itself 
doesn't actually do anything aside from make you dash a short distance. Since the mist hits the first target, you won't be able to just charge into a minion wave and expect to CC your target as you would with someone like Vi. That said, it does give you an auto attack reset, so don't neglect to cast it with a quick tap, even if minions will block the mist. Before we go any further, I'd like to just take a second to remind you guys to sub to the channel if you enjoy our content. It helps us a ton, and it helps you make sure that you never miss out on any of our uploads. Alright, so back to the ability breakdown. Viego's E is Harrowed Path. The active is that Viego sends a specter in the target direction that creates a trail of mist along its path, which lasts 8 seconds. The mist spreads around the first instance of terrain it encounters. While inside the mist, Viego gains bonus attack speed, and when he's not attacking or casting, he becomes camouflaged and gains bonus movement speed. With his W's dash range being so short, this extra movement speed is really nice for your early ganks. The attack speed steroid is huge, and like your Q's passive, it synergizes well with the on-hit build that you'll be using. While it may seem like the camouflage isn't too useful for ganking since the mist can give away your location, there are some instances where creative usage can pick up a kill. Let's say that you want to gank bot lane, and the enemy has a normal ward and tribe rush. If you use your mist to travel along the wall, they won't see you on the minimap, as long as they aren't actually moving their camera up to where they would see the mist. In that case, you're as good as stealth. This ability also really helps out in team fights. Aside from the damage and movement speed, the fact that the mist covers such a huge area means that your opponents won't be able to predict which direction you may attack from, or if you're in the mist at all. You can simply throw your E at a random wall so that your opponents worry about you being in the mist and take a different route to flank their backline. Viego's ultimate is Heartbreaker. Viego discards his current possessions if he has one and gains displacement immunity over the cast time, then blinks to the target location. Once he arrives, he does a blast of damage to all nearby enemies. This damage scales off of AD and is further increased by a percentage depending on his critical strike chance. Enemies hit are also knocked back. The lowest percent HP enemy in range is hit by Viego's blade rather than the blast. This target takes the blast damage plus a percentage of his missing HP and they aren't knocked back. They are also slowed by 99% for half a second and the hit applies on hit effects at full effectiveness. This ultimate has a lot going for it. For one, it gives you some true mobility. W and E may help you get around a bit, but they are more pseudo mobility spells. Ultimate's 500 range blink is basically like a flash that resets each time you pick up your passive, meaning that once you get a single kill, you'll likely clean up the entire fight. Since it's an execute, you can use it to finish off your opponents, but don't just save it for last hitting near dead enemies. If you see a high priority carry in range, you can use the ultimate to try and take them out. Thanks to the knockback, it's almost like a small scale Camille ultimate, isolating your target just a bit, buying enough time for you to burst them down and possess them. Before we move ahead, let me clarify how this ultimate works with his passive. First, any time that Viego swaps forms, his ultimate goes on a 1.5 second cooldown, if it's not already on cooldown. As I said earlier, possessing a target gives one free cast, but this cast is independent of his regular ultimate, and is not a true reset. This means that if you don't use the ultimate while possessing a target, you lose that chance once you discard them. Okay, so now that we've laid out the abilities, let's do a bit of a summary on Viego. Mechanically, he's actually not that intensive. He basically has three passives, one from his actual passive, two from his Q, and his active abilities are pretty simple in terms of how easy they are to land. The reason he's so hard is due to his possession mechanic. You'll have to know which champion to possess, when to do so, and when to use your ultimate to discard the shell and go back to Viego's normal form. For example, if you possess a fed Ash, it may be worth it to use her form for the full 10 seconds. Not only does she do a lot of damage on her own, but remember, all that attack speed will go great with Viego's Q passive. On the other hand, if you possess a Zac that isn't doing so well, you'll probably just want to use your E for the mobility it provides and immediately use ultimate to go back to your regular form so you can continue killing your opponents. Something to note about Viego is that he is very much an auto attack based champion. Aside from his ultimate's execute damage, his active spells don't do that much damage. Instead, a lot of it comes from his Q's passive and the attack speed from his E. This means that his best carry build involves building crit and on hit as opposed to lethality. This design was intentional and gives him a somewhat similar feeling to Yasuo. And just like Yasuo, as I said early on in this video, Viego has an incredibly high skill ceiling, possibly the highest in the game. This guide is a great starter kit, but if you really, really want to master this champion, I highly recommend that you head over to ProGuides.com, where our challenger level coaches can teach you all you'll need to know, in even better detail, so you can play the Ruined King like the best players on the server. But for now, let's talk about how to actually play him, starting with his early game. 
For such a hard scaling carry, Viego has an incredible first clear. He has both single target and AoE damage, making it easy to clear any camp quickly. And with his Q's second passive, he gets a ton of sustain. To get the most optimal clear, when clearing the multi-target camps in the jungle, make sure to line up the monsters to hit as many as you can with your Q, and then auto attack each mark. This maximizes both your damage and your healing. Most junglers take a lot of damage if they do the Raptors on their first clear, and some even opt out of them entirely. But with Viego, you can heal back more damage than you take from them. So his PvE is really OP, but what about when it comes time to fight actual players? Viego is definitely more of a scaling champion, but it's not like he just rolls over. His early damage is actually decent, but his issue is more his lack of mobility and sticking power. Since you have just one short range gap closer that can't even go over walls, once you're in a fight, you're pretty much in it. And you don't really have a way to retreat or chase mobile opponents, so don't overcommit if you can't finish the job. Take the safer route of clearing your camps and looking for ganks when you know the enemy jungler won't be there, rather than forcing invades or taking risky 2v2s or 3v3s. Quick note for ganking, as I mentioned earlier when doing the ability rundown, you can use your E to sneak past wards. While your enemies will see the mist if they actually looked at the warded area itself, most players do rely on the minimap, so there's a good chance you can get in range to successfully pick up a kill or at least blow some summoners. Once you get your ultimate, you're quite a bit stronger in skirmishes, since you can use it to finish off low HP opponents that try to escape, or in the worst case, you can use it to make a quick retreat. At this point, you can start taking fights with even numbers. But remember, just because you can doesn't mean that you always should. Your main goal is to get to your two item power spike, where you become incredibly strong in 1v1 duels, small skirmishes, and full on team fights. Now let's talk about a few tips for team fighting as Viego. Once it comes time to team fight, Viego has a lot of options. He's very good at shredding down tanks, fighting against bruisers, and assassinating squishier backline carries. This means you can flex to whatever your team comp needs, or what you need to do to counter the enemy composition. Front to back style fighting is viable, since you can possess the tank you bring down for a massive heal, but at other times it may not be so simple. Although Viego generally wants to be in the fray, if the enemy composition has a lot of lockdown and burst damage, you may want to take a different approach. Instead of just jumping in there from the get-go, throw out your E and lurk around the fight, until either your team gets a target low enough for you to ulti and finish off, or until one of the enemy carries mispositions and you can make a quick pick. One note specifically about when you're ultying into a fight, make sure you're not jumping onto a high mobility target or one with flash up. Once you are in, you are in. You rely on getting kills to go untargetable and reset your ultimate so you can reposition as you need. If you jump in and don't get a kill, you'll be blown up fast. Normally, we'd have a list of things that Viego counters and things that counter him, but due to his extremely high skill cap and his ability to deal with pretty much any situation because of his passive, he isn't necessarily hard countered by any one thing in particular. His early game, though, isn't nearly as strong as his late game, but it's not necessarily bad. The one weakness you could say he has is that he's melee, making him susceptible to being kited or locked down by crowd control. But with proper passive usage, even those can be bypassed, as long as he can bring down the right enemy. Things like Graves in Italy though can stop him from getting off the ground, and like we said he's a scaling champion, so his early game is very exploitable by hyper-powered early game champions. Now to finish things off, let's take a look at the runes you should be running and the items you should be building. For runes, you'll run Press the Attack, Triumph, Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, Sudden Impact, and Ravenous Hunter. If the enemy has multiple tanky targets and you think you'll be dealing with them first in front-to-back fights, you can swap Press the Attack with Conqueror and Coup de Grasse with Cut Down. Now for the items. You'll generally want to start with Hailblade for Blue Smite sticking power, but if you think you'll be dueling opponents more than chasing them down, you can opt for Ember Knife. As far as completed items, there are a lot of options, but you'll always want to fittingly build Blade of the Ruined King first. You can then pick up Berserker's Greaves, Kraken Slayer, and Ginsu's Rageblade. These four items are your standard core, though the boots can be traded out for plated steel caps or mercury treads, if really needed. You can fill in the last two slots depending on preference or what you need for your game. The standard build is Black Cleaver or Steric Gauge to make you a bit beefier. If you need more specific counters to the other team, Wit's End is a great counter to magic threats, while Death's Dance worked great against AD heavy teams. If you're really desperate to survive fights, you can even pick up full tank items like Randuin's Omen and Spirit Visage. Though we generally think it's better to go Glass Cannon or Bruiser, if you absolutely can't survive, itemizing into the tankiest options can help you live long enough to use your passive, or even building something like a Guardian Angel. Now for a bit of an alternative build. In most cases, you'll pick up Ginsu's Rageblade as your fourth item, as it synergizes super well with the percentage-based damage of your Q's passive and Blade of the Rune King. But if the enemy team is really squishy, 
You can instead build into Collector as your fourth item and pick up Infinity Edge after, finishing things off with Bloodthirster. This build will give you hard-hitting autos that allow you to practically one-shot your opponents. And that about wraps things up for our guide to Viego, the Ruined King. While he is insanely hard to master, I hope this helps to put you off to a good start. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to let us know what champion you think is the hardest to master down in the comments below. And one thing before you go, feel free to check out our Discord. The link to that is in the description box below. We'd love to have you as part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back at the next video. But until then, good luck on the Rift, stay safe, and wash your hands.